There's Bruce. Bruce, before before you uh, switch over to host, I wanted to show something. She likes quick. She likes. Oh, you switch over. Well, that's okay. That's okay. Just just leave the screen as is. I just wanted to show what I found. You, I'm walking. I'm going through my uh, my bookshelf. First of all, I found this this uh, Clarion accessories catalog from 2003. Can you see? Oh, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So there's uh, gosh, what's in here? There's, there's some stuff. ice chip stuff. Ice chip mm-hmm. wizard. Remember all this stuff? Mike, you're in here, aren't you? I I'm sure I must be in there somewhere. Oh, let's see. They're kind of in order. Well, kind of. Do you think box office would be near the front? Yes. You would think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, I could have been under Mitten. Uh, maybe, yeah, probably at that time it may have been it may have been listed as so? yeah, yeah. Jim has That's been selling my stuff for a very long time. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Clarence Shop one, though, John, isn't that? Is that, um, is that the Clarence Shop one or the Soft Lusty one? This is Clarence Shop. Clarence Shop. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, shop. Oh, oh, that's why you're not going to be there. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're not. It's Clarion Shop. Yeah, yeah right. okay. it's Clarion Shop. There we go. Okay. Nice, nice printing, though. I got to say, it's on nice little paper. Everything. I, I kind of want to order some of these things now. Ace, Ace <laughs> icons. I want to get that. All right. Anyway, I got edition now, John. I also got I got this one here. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Who's, who's got this one here? I've got the copy of that. <laughs> do you? Yeah, I do. I've also um, got Dave's book kicking around. I was thumbing through it, and it has. Uh, I can learn something. Here's another one here. Um, He's got this one. There we go. Uh, I think I do, actually. Yeah. Probably a couple of large somewhere. applications. $40, thirty-nine ninety-five. It's a, I'm sure there's at least $40 in value in that. I, I think so. I just find all these old things, and it's like I start reading through them, and I go, uh, yeah, still applicable. Hmm. It's quite remarkable, I think. Jim, you're muted. Jim. Who, who, what? Yeah, just Jim talking. Here. There we go. I was asking if you had any LPM books. Oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I never owned a copy of LPM, I don't think. <laughs> oh, you didn't? No, I never did. I thought I did. It's my religion. You know, I just, I, I, why would I have LPM? <laughs> we got, Frank has his hand up. Why does Frank have his hand up? I don't know. Not up. Uh, wait, okay. I have to mosey fairly soon here. I, I've got to run my son off to a medical thing, so, so but okay. I just thought I would drop in and say hello for a bit, because uh, I'm happy to see Jim coming on here, and, uh, and I will watch this later, uh, just because I think it's worthwhile info. Yes, I think it'll be interesting. But what's really interesting is that um, Jim and I were emailing back and forth, and he sent me something about, okay, how are we going to do this presentation, are you going to do this, and I'm going to do that, I said, so I sent back um, kind of how I thought it should go, and that was like, Tuesday, I guess. And I hadn't heard back from him, so I, I looked back and, and I, I actually didn't send it. It was in draft <laughs> mode still. So I, so I sent it to him like, well, I don't know, 20 minutes ago. And then he called me on Skype and then we talked about it a little bit. And he goes, all right, so uh, we'll see you in like an hour, right? And I go, no, it's in about three minutes. So <laughs> the timing was off. We would have had to wait for Jim for an hour if he hadn't called me. So it all worked out. It all worked out well. Yeah, we got the email perfect. and then we, then we talked together. We got it all coming. This will be right. easy for you, John. It's a piece of cake. Piece of cake. All right. I'm going to share my screen now. We'll get this thing rolling here. And I've got to fly. Have a great day. Just, right. hey, Just like Enjoy that. Enjoy your time. Bye-bye. Just right. like that. Okay. 
All right. So um, I guess there's just a cold water factor you're about if you fall in the water. You're probably going to die. <laughs> if you fall in cold water, you're probably not going to make it. So you got a minute after being submerged to get your breathing under control. And if that doesn't happen, then you're, you're, the possibility of drowning drastically increases. Many people hyperventilate, faint, and drown before they're able to calm down their breathing. So there you go. What is this? Roughly 20% of those who fall in cold water die in the first minute. So I think that's water. I think that's water. I think that's yeah. the lesson here. I think right. that's, a, that's the takeaway, isn't it, John? I think so. I think that's the takeaway. Don't, don't fall in. Don't get in there. Just don't. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody out there in Clarion Live. Land. This is the Clarion Live weekly webinar. See it, learn it, and share it. This is webinar number eight, oh, 684. Uh, today is November the 18th, 2022. Clarion date 81044. All webinars are recorded and available at clarionlive.com. Uh, please join us on Skype. And the webinars are live streaming now on YouTube at uh, youtube.com slash Clarion Live. And we have four viewers at the moment, three of whom like what they see. That's pretty good. It, was it the cold water thing or was it showing the books? I don't know. But we got to do more of whatever we just did to keep those likes up. All right, you have host for today's webinar. John, that's me. I'm here. Hey, Bruce Johnson is here. Andy Wilson is here. And my Canton just left. So we move on. Rules of the webinar. All attendees are muted. That means you can't hear you. Type your questions into the questions box. We'll read them to the presenter. If you want to speak, we can do so. Please raise your hand. Type your question box. Finally, take your vitamins every day. Every day. Are you taking your vitamins, Andy? Yeah. Next question. Okay, fine. <laughs> We'll talk after the webinar. Uh, we have a feature presentation today. Myself and Jim Morgan will be converting TPS to SQL. And this, this should be interesting because we just kind of sorted it out about 20 minutes ago. So we'll, uh, we'll run through it. But um, Jim has done this create some templates that you may not know about that are very helpful in converting things over. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to run through the whole thing from beginning to end. Uh, next week's a holiday. We won't be here. Uh, December 2nd, I put Gordon down. Um, possibly. Did you, Bruce, was that you talking with Gordon? Yeah, it was. I, I, I sent a note. I haven't got a... Uh, it's either 2nd or 16th, but I don't have a fixed date. Okay. So I, I put it out for the 2nd. Uh, he might, it might be after. Might be, uh, as Bruce said, the 16th. Um, Matthew Lovett, a new presenter, will be coming on on the 9th. He has created an uh, easy time template, which will be free to everyone. It has a date time countdown and stopwatch classes in there. So that's happening on the 9th, and then uh, we don't know what's happening. But end of the year is coming, so we shall, we shall see what happens. Oh, look at this. Can you... Can you guess what's behind the top secret sign? <laughs> Don't say it because it's top secret. B. And that looks like an L. This that could be here? a P. That could be a P. Yeah, I'm sure it's a P. Okay, you go with P? All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't and know. Then, um, one, two, three, again. It's probably a password. It's a password. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah, it's like one, two, three, or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we did a survey, as you all know, um, for CIDC 2023, and it was very encouraging. We were going to make a firm commitment to, by today, but we didn't yet. I mean, it's pretty firm. It's like 99%. But we want to go over the numbers just a little bit more. So this is why it's still a top secret uh, until we get everything together. So this will remain secret for now. So pretend that you didn't hear anything I just said. <laughs> I'll put you all under NDAs. What's that? All right. Announcements. No answers. User group meeting. There was one this week. I don't 
Uh, I've just gone to YouTube to look for the video so I can quickly uh, refresh my mind and put the notes on it. And I can't find the video. I don't know if it's just me, but the Clarion Live, YouTube Clarion Live. You couldn't find the YouTube video? No. Um, in fact, he's showing very few. He's saying five months ago, two years ago, 11 years oh. ago. You need to click on the live tab. There's there's two tabs there. One's videos and one's a live tab right next to it. You got to click on that. Oh. This is the mistake that people are all of a sudden making. I've seen this commented on in the in the Skype a couple times this week. I don't know if this oh, is you, a new you, thing you, or whatever. Yeah, it is because I would like I said, I'd go on uh, and just do yeah. that. Uh, so that's evidently a change. No, I didn't, uh, I didn't pick up on that. I just went to the uh, videos. Yep, I didn't change it either, so I'll I'll go and look and see if we can. They used to make it so you could uh, set your front page, so it had all this newest stuff on there, live mm-hmm. stuff, but they must have done a change, so I'll go back and I, see if I can change it. I would normally do it for myself and then for the Wednesday one, but, uh, right. uh, but I didn't. So, so no, yeah, sorry, there was one, it was all exciting, all very good, and I have a clue what was in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, excellent. And then there was an open webinar on Wednesday, and I was there, and Andy was there, and Bruce was there. And, um, and Mike was there, too. And Mike was there. And the only thing I remember about it is that we saw the um, the premiere of season two of Cape Town, the series, um, at the end of it. And that's and then we did other things before that. But there's a lot of questions on the, the uh, con- context and end context within the template language. Yeah. So we, uh, like we, we played around in the, in the content and attempted a bit. And... Oh, that's right, yeah, did that. Not for a little while, but not, uh, not the entire day. <laughs> uh, when we were talking about toolboxes and versions of Karen and <sighs> why some versions of Karen, the program yes. dies. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, so it was a good tip about that. I, yep. know, I, had, I had a question <clears throat> from a, uh, a customer followed up, and that was Paul. That was Paul who was uh, working on that, and he has, he's since confirmed, he's rolled back to 11.0, and the whole thing is just kicked into life and worked as normal. So I'll follow up from that. Uh, but somebody else also reported the exact same uh, this week as well. It must have been, I'm thinking about it, it must have been Thursday, because it was after the open webinar. So, uh, so yeah, so it's, I think there's more people are now switching. It's now becoming more, you know, more prevalent that there is issues there. Issues with 11.1, or if you switch it back and compile 11.0, then, it, then things work. Basically, yes. I guess but I always say that because I don't want to cause libelous. That's an issue. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so, so I guess the main tip out of, out of the webinar is that if you're compiling 11.1 and and all of a sudden, I mean, you start getting a GPF or things aren't making sense, but it's crashing or hanging up, try compiling in a different version of Clarion, either 11 or even back to 10 if you want, if you need to go back. 11 is so good. good. Most, there were some good. very, very yeah. good, very good 11 builds. There's some dodgy ones, but there's some very good 11 ones. So yeah. good 11 build. Yeah. Well, 11 is there off of production and touch wood. Yeah, it seems, it seems all right. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, so that was a uh, thing we learned. And then there was not a NetTalk user group meeting this week. No, there wasn't. Nope. And there's not going to be one next week. Nope. Holiday is next week. Yeah, it's not going to be a weekly webinar. But there will be an OEATIS and an open webinar next week. So those will happen. Right. And, uh, oh, look, I didn't change the here next week thing. It should be it should be nothing. It just says us again. But it's not us again. It's just us this time. And I always miss something. We should have a contest, see if you can spot what I did wrong before I spot what I did wrong. And I'm not sure how that would work. Okay. You get a clarion gold star if you spot the error before I do. And it's on your honor. It's the honor system. If you spotted the error before I mentioned it, then give yourself a clarion live gold star. We are so generous around here with those gold stars. All right. Um, we have a feature presentation. Myself and Jim. So are you ready, Jim? I'm ready. I'm ready too. Jim's sitting out on the beach, and I don't know if that's a. <laughs> if he might be too relaxed to do this, this if, I, if I showed you the real background, you'd have snow in the background. It's like uh, 15 degrees here in Minnesota, where I'm sitting right now. Oh my gosh, you're in Minnesota. No. Yeah. But hmm. my my virtual green screen looks a lot more exciting. Okay, we'll, we'll go with that. All right. So that in mind, with that in mind. 
I'm going to take back the uh, host. The host, yeah. I'm going to drop off in there. Yeah. I'm going to stick around for a tiny bit, but I'm waiting for a customer to contact us, so I might have to connect with them. Yeah. I'm customers, hey? Fair enough. Before I do that, okay. All right. So I've got everything kind of lined up here on tab, so we'll kind of see if we can um, run through this. So, um, Jim created a template that will do a lot of the work for you as far as converting TPS files to SQL. And that includes moving the data over, which is always a chore to do by yourself. If you, if you, uh, I mean, I did it by hand a long time ago for our app that was moving from TPS to SQL. And it was, uh, took a long time. But Jim has templates that will do that. So what we're going to do today is run through that. And we can, um, we'll step you through it. We're going to download it. Um, have to install it on your system. And then there's an example app there. We're going to run through the example app. We're going to run through the documentation and just do all the different steps so you can see how to do it yourself. And then uh, Jim's here to help us do these things because I'm sure there will be questions along the way. And then uh, Jim has a, how many, what was it, an 80? How, how big was the, the thing you just converted, Jim? Uh, we just used the basic process on a uh, app. Uh, there's like five apps, maybe 500 procedures, uh, 80 tables, and uh, you know, pretty much automated the entire process of going from uh, TPS to SQL. Yeah, there you go. And Jim also offers this, offers this as a service as well, so you can hire them, and they will help you if you have something that's you know a little bit beyond uh, your knowledge, I guess, or you want to do it quickly. Uh, Jim can help do that as well. I think he's, I think on the website it says it might take you a, a day or two, maybe less, to get it all going for you. But this part he's made available for free, which I think is quite generous, and that's why we're going to run through it. So, off we go. So the first thing that you would like to do, what you need to do, is go to mittensoftware.com. All right? So here we are on the mittensoftware.com page. So it took me a few minutes to figure out exactly where this free template was. Uh, it's not under downloads. You have to go under store. And then Clarion Books and Source. And here it is right here. So he's got a few things in here. Some of them are free. This one is free. I sent to SQL templates. Um, so you populate this field that easy for any dictionary data conversion, optimal data access, indexes and constraints, data manager, cascade triggers, purge, auto ink records. So it's a very cool template. So you would select this. All right, so you're going to basically go through here and check out. You're going to add this to your cart. And then oh, I guess we're going through a thing here. Six, key seven, ten. Make sure I'm an actual person. All right. So this is in your card, but the total is zero. So you're going to go ahead and place your order. And from here, I, I don't think I'm going to run through the rest. It should be pretty familiar to anybody. You would go ahead and create a um, create an account if you don't already have an account that didn't, and then you go through the checkout process. Once you go through the checkout process, you'll get an email, and the email will have the download link and it will have a password for the zip file because it comes with the zip file and the zip file is password protected. So we're going to pretend that we did all that stuff because I actually did do all that stuff. And you end up here. So this is what we ended up downloading is this isom 2 sqlzip And again, this is password protected. So you need to unzip this. And I unzipped it into my development folder. C11 apps and I made a folder called isom to SQL. And this is what unzips from there. Okay? So if we look in the zip file, it's the same thing down here. Except this doesn't belong there. There we go. Okay. So you get this example, you get this template, and you get this readme doc. So the readme doc is really where you kind of want to start because this will take you through the whole process of getting these things installed. Um, so let's Let's bring this up here. All right, so this is really uh, pretty well done, I think. I didn't run into any major snags as I went through the process here. So we'll just look through the documentation, and, and then we'll go through it. So um, 
is license. Now, uh, Jim recommends that you donate stuff. This is kind of donationware, donateware, whatever. I don't know what the term is here. But depending on how much you felt this helped you, you're encouraged to make a donation. Now, I guess Jim has no way of tracking, I guess, whether you donate or not. But all support, of course, is appreciated. So these are recommended donation amounts. Here's the history. Look at how old this is. 1998? That it goes way back. Uh, actually, some of the uh, concepts we took from uh, other uh, templates and enhanced on them. But, uh, yeah, it's been around for, uh, well, this is up for 10 years, but we've been using some of these basic techniques for almost 20 years now. Oh, that's so, awesome. Okay. So, yeah, here's your initial public release here on 2012. All right, so here's the concept. Um, and you can read through that. We're not going to read through this, but... Basically, you just, you want to move to SQL. And um, just out of curiosity, how many people are still in TPS and at least one of your apps that you might want to run to SQL? Raise your hand if, you, if you're interested in moving TPS files to SQL. And I see four hands went up already. And I'm sure there's, there's probably more out there. So that's good. Okay, good to know. All right, uh, user options. So these are user options that you would put on the templates. And what do you put on the tables, I guess, right? So I'm guessing you're familiar with what user options are. But this, this lets you set your dictionary so that it will do certain things with the template. All right, so... Yeah, typically, John, you don't, you don't have to use those. They're only to fix problems that the uh, template doesn't handle it in the way that you want it. Like, we will automatically try to discover uh, date fields because, you know, in a, in a uh, clarion dictionary, a date field's not always a, a long or, a, you know, a date if it's a more modern dictionary. It could be in a string or it could be in some other, um, you know, uh, data element types. So, uh, we try to discover which ones we believe are dates, but if somehow we think this is a date field and it's really not, then you can put like a no date uh, one on there, and then it won't generate as a date field when it goes across uh, the board. Okay, and this also does things with auto increments as well. Required like the auto version. Okay, so if you're using auto ink fields, um, Jim has a way to handle those. I guess we'll go over those as we get further along. All right. So uh, here's, we'll just go through this. Unzip the templates. We did that. So they're down here already. Register the ISAM to SQL TPL. So we want to do that. So let's do that next. Well, the first thing we want to do, I guess, is copy the template over. Let's move this kind of out of the way. And we want to copy it to here, I believe. So here's my Clarion 11.1 .1 accessory. We're going to actually do this in, in Clarion 11.1. .1. Um, accessory template win folder. And we need to copy the template over there. So these three files get copied up to here. I already have them in here, but we're just going to pretend that we didn't. So we'll replace them all there. All right, so the next thing you want to do is register that template. So in Clarion, uh, we'll just go to Tools, get it the Template Registry. I have a lot of templates. I'm going to register. Okay, we want to go to Clarion. And template and with. Okay, and it was, yeah, I said, to SQL.tpl. So we'll register that one. I thought this was, this was interesting because uh, Jim put it with AABC, so it shows up at the top of everything. Easy access. <laughs> Easy access. <laughs> yep, so it's, it's ready to go there. All right, so we've registered it. Let's head back and see what's next on our list. 
register. Create an empty ABC app that references the dictionary that you wish to work. You can use an existing app as long as it does not have extended file generation options. Okay, so we can do that. So we want a new solution. And this could just be anything, all right? We'll just call it. Oops. Test, that'll do fine. Now we want to put it in the, put it in that folder. Yeah, that should be fine. Okay, so we want to have the dictionary file in here, correct? Yes. I know we got to go back to find that. Where are we here? Here. Okay, now the dictionary, um, she has an example app here, so we're just going to pull it. We're going to be converting this here, so we're going to go ahead and pull it, the dictionary from here. DBC. We want to wizard it. We just want to empty, don't we? We don't want any of this stuff. Yeah, you don't need to wizard it. Yeah. All we're going to do basically is just run a wizard out of here. So it's done its thing. So now we're going to go ahead and load this up. Now you can, you don't have to use a blank dictionary or yeah, a blank app either. Um, it needs to be an ABC app, but as long as it's got the dictionary in it, you can try that again. You can use that as well. Right, it's a utility template, so it basically just requires an ABC app. Right, we could have just loaded the example app up, but that probably would have worked just fine too. Yeah. Okay, so we'll go back here, but we went ahead and created a blank one. Uh, run the utility template. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and run the utility template. So to run a utility template, there's a little gear at the top here. It says run utility template. I'm going to do that. So right, right at the top, easy to find. You can also hit control U to run a utility template from the IDE. Uh, shortcuts. Okay. All right, so. So file with driver toss speed. I don't, I don't think there's any, oh, there's other things here too you could convert over, I guess. And the scripts folder. Now these, you need to be a little careful with, I think. You might want to look at the docs on that part. Right, because I forget if it creates the uh, folder for you automatically. This does create a child folder to your current app folder, but I can't remember if it automatically creates a folder or not. Yeah, it, it, it does, and it says here, folders above must exist, create manually. So you, you have a little tip right there, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> and what to do with these, guys, these two things. Um, so, back here, he actually tells you a lot about what to do. Um, as you're going through here. But the options will be saved in the application folder. That's good. Uh, let's move this a little more. Okay, SQL script folder is where all the scripts are placed. The default uses a folder below the application. You'll have to manually create the folder. If you forget, you'll see errors like to not create script file. I recommend a fully specified path or a relative path. Tip save manually altered scripts into another location. All right, so we can do this SQL scripts things, but we don't have an SQL script folder, so we want to go ahead and make that. So we're here, and we're here, and we're running it out of here, so we want it to be underneath this down here. Yeah. I mean, conceptually, what we're doing here uh, is we're creating scripts that will Define the schema for the database. They will, uh, so it'll create all your tables. It'll create your indexes based on all your keys from the dictionary. And it'll also create some other optional things as far as if you want to do some things like orphan checks or you want to do some foreign key constraints. And then it'll also create a, a data conversion program, but it doesn't matter of that it's a Clarion 
project with a source file, so you don't have an app file. So if you're not familiar with building an exe from source, that's uh, the technique that we use. You don't have to learn that, but it's pretty easy to run that, you know, load that project and run it. Um, but that's conceptually what we're doing at this point. We're not really building any kind of app per se. We're building uh, SQL scripts and a conversion program. Right. Um, Rich has his hand up. Rich, I'm going to open your mic if you have a question. Or no. comment. I thought I'd put my hand down. Oh. <laughs> I'll enough. do that again. All right. You can always chime in, Rich, if you want. Your mic's open if you want to. All right. So um, we've got SQL scripts created. And the second one is the server data folder. So that's the location of your uh, TPS files. So when it builds the, uh, the data conversion program, it knows where to look for those uh, input files. Like that. Still there, John? Oh, sorry, I was muted. <laughs> Apologies. Um, there you yeah, go. Here you know. Okay, so should I do it like this, or should I put the entire path in here? Yeah. Uh, well, that's saying it's relative to there. I, did you create that um, a folder called server and a, another folder called share underneath your current? I folder? created SQL scripts. I can make one called server and then one called share. What do you think? Well, it just reads the data, so if the data is already there, I would just change it to its current location. It's really read-only at that point. All right. So what do you want me to do? Where are the files? Uh, where, probably an example folder is the files. Yeah, they're That's, here. So just use that folder, that example folder. But we want to generate this new, right? We want to see it generate for ourselves. Uh, yeah, but I'm just saying it's, got, it, it's just reading the TPS files. We want to create the scripts, and yes, the SQL scripts folder, but we want to read the data files from the example folder. We don't need to read Oh, that's that. right. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So this is looking for the this is looking for our TPS files. Correct. Gotcha. Okay. So we want it to go example dot example. Right there. Right there. Not just that example. Yeah. Okay. Copy. Copy that. All right. Okay. 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 All right. So this is where the scripts are going to be generated. This is where our data is, the TPS files, these guys. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. So that looks good. Uh, we're targeting the SQL platform here in the SQL. Use this database name. So this is the name that's going to be in um, in your SQL database. So sure. my DB name is what this is called. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't have one called my DB name, so I'm going to make one called my DB name. Just make sure that you have um, a database created here that's the same name as what you put in that template. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and create that. And what was it, my DB? Oops, where did it go? Okay. All right, so we're good there. That's that. And this is when it creates the scripts, it puts in a use statement that says use this database name. And so that's why this has to be here. Uh, open the editor. No, I saved no. And then this one, use date time, not date fields. That depends on how you're going to use your, do your data, I suppose. Yeah, right. I mean, uh, old school, there was only date time stamps in the uh, SQL database. Now that, you know, Microsoft SQL separated date and time into separate fields, or you can use the old style date time. 
Usually, uh, we generally recommend you separate date time into two separate fields because a lot of times when you do a clearing filter, you're filtering on a date field. And if it's within a date time construct, then you have to be careful about how you set that time part of that filter. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, results that you don't expect if you didn't set your date to midnight or something like that. So we generally separate those uh, into two separate fields rather than combine them. Okay. All right, so that's the first tab. We're done with that. All right, do not change table definition during conversion. Create table scripts. So it's going to create this as your table scripts. So that will create all the tables. Uh, yep. Generate data conversion program and script. This generates a very fast two step conversion. CW program converts ISOM data to CSV type files. SQL scripts for bulk importer created. So. Essentially what, what Jim's doing is taking the um, your TPS data, making it into a CSV file, and then bulk importing it into SQL. So that's how you're moving your data over. And it works really well and very fast too. All right, so we're going to generate the load data and generate column list as comments. Okay. <laughs> I guess that just puts comments in the in the script. Right. Yeah. That's all it does. And okay. you can use the add file attributes. You can use it. Leave that blank. That's not a right. Okay. So then, so these are all the other scripts that it's going to be generating. Correct access scripts. I've, I've never actually used this one. So not quite. You only you only need it. Does. Most people will set up their. Uh, credentials so that their login has uh, DB owner rights, so you don't have to worry about that. But, uh, you know, best practices, and most of the big shops say you don't give, you know, a blank uh, user DB owner rights. You only give them, you know, restricted life rights. So these will give you them, like, grant, uh, say, insert, delete, and update access to certain tables. So... Maybe they only can do certain things to the tables, but maybe they can't execute certain stored procedures that may be dangerous and things like that. Okay, gotcha. Okay, then you can generate index scripts. That's what this one will be here. And that would just come off of um, the, the keys you created, right, in the dictionary. Yeah, you have to be a little index. careful with that one because a lot of times people in their clearing dictionaries have uh, what I call redundant indexes or keys because uh, maybe they want to, uh, sometimes it's easier to do relationships where you just relate on the primary uh, field, like say an order number, and then you, but then maybe have another key that's order number and line number, or order number and customer name or something like that. So you get some somewhat redundant um, keys here in your dictionary just to support different features. And in SQL, you really don't need that. In fact, in SQL, you don't have to have any indexes at all. But this, uh, you can usually delete maybe what I've seen, maybe about 20 or 30% of those uh, indexes out of uh, SQL because they, you want the, more, the most specific key from your dictionary to be the resulting index. So if you got one key on order number, another key on order number, line number, you delete the key that's the the index that's only order number, you keep the index that's order number, line number. That makes sense. All right. So you should go through and double check things. You should, you should probably just purge that a little bit. But yeah, it's a good, yeah, I mean, it can be run as is, but it's a good starting point. If you really want to optimize your database, you should eliminate some of the redundant indexes that typical or, or typical in most dictionaries. Okay. Uh, trigger scripts. I'm not sure what's happening here. Are those the – what is happening here? Is this uh, uh, just generating – If you want to do uh, – um, a lot of times in your uh, TPS, you've done some uh, relational integrity, in there. like you do cascade changes or cascade updates or cascade deletes. Mm -hmm. And if you want to – you know, those are – on a SQL, they're generally more efficient to do as database triggers. So this will generate us starting point for those triggers so you can basically we generally take that stuff out of the dictionary in its final form and let the database 
generally do the triggers and don't put the those kind of uh, relationship things in the uh, dictionary. So, but if you've got them in your in your dictionary right now, it'll generate those script files to create those triggers for you. Oh, okay. Uh, auto ink purge scripts. This has to do with the auto inks again. Yeah, I mean, uh, most clearing programs, if you're using the old style auto ink fields, they will, uh, you know, it creates a record for the insert. But sometimes if the user aborts the program or kills the program, somehow these uh, little uh, placeholder records are in place that say just have the identity field and nothing else in, in there. So um, there's a, I forget exactly which field it is, but there's a way that you can say, well, if I just created, say, a customer, but the customer doesn't have a name, it must just be a placeholder record, so get rid of it. So you can flag a field like a name and say, this is a required field, and if it's blank, then it's just a crap record and, and, and get rid of it. So those scripts will basically identify those uh, records that can be purged in that manner. Okay. And then foreign key constraint scripts. So that's your relationships of one table to the other. And, uh, you know, a form key constraint is uh, a little bit more efficient way to do it in SQL as far, you know, little, you know it uses basically the index uh, technology, but it's a little bit more uh, definitive way to relate your tables together. So it will create those constraints for you. You can have, uh, I believe it generates them as no constraints. Uh, uh, excuse me, no, whether it can, they don't enforce the constraints. You can create a foreign key constraint with or without enforcement, and I believe we've created them without enforcement. So if for some reason there's that, see that parent record's not there, it's not going to uh, bark on you when you do your data load, because a lot of times you're converting from TPS to SQL, you don't have 100% data integrity on all your relationships. Like you might have... Uh, child records without parents or parent records that really should have childs that don't have children. So, um, but it, it puts those uh, constraints out there for you. All right. And that's, that's, that's it. We're set up. So now we just hit OK. And that, that was quick because we don't have a large dictionary and um, it created the scripts. So let's go look at what it did. Okay, so we generated these, let's see, back here, nope, back here, in SQL scripts. So this is what it generated for us. So we can look at, there you go. So here's what I was talking about with the use, it's using the, the name that we put into the template. So that's why you want to make sure you get your name right, you have a database that matches that. And then the rest of it is SQL scripts, where you do create your tables. There is a date in here. Here's a date here. Order date. So it's doing the dates for you. There you go. I mean, you can, if you're following along, you can look at this yourself. But there's a whole bunch of them in this one. And this, this is an array, and it took care of that because arrays are not used in SQL, right? So this is that's what you did here, it looks like. Yeah, that was actually a two-dimensional array of uh, months and something else. So. Yeah, so it converts that over. There we go. All right, and then it has a few other scripts in here, too. So we can start running these scripts. And uh, what I'm going to do... I'm just going to drag them over to here. Put their uh, tabs up there. Let me move this out. Oh, what? No. Uh, I broke the one around. Hold on a second. There it is. All right, I'm going to move this to my other monitor because I like to just drag these, these things over. Okay, so I might be going to do a new query, and we'll do the tables. 
All right, so right now in my DB name, no tables. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. Oops, um, wait a minute here. All right, so all of our tables should be created now. All right, so there they are. Yeah, so we're kind of ready to go as far as that goes. We could do um, the indexes. Take a look at that. Out of the way. Okay, so here it is creating indexes off of what we have in our dictionary. I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway, just like that. Okay. Uh, what else? We're kind of skipping the grants. We take a look at it, I guess. Okay, so this is something you would work on yourself if you needed that. Um, here's the load data script. But we haven't created this file yet. Right, we, have to, we still have to run a program that will get the data out. Correct. Yep. So we can't run this yet because this won't do anything for us. But this is what will bring in the data once we continue on to the next step. So let's go and do that. Oops, back too far. Here. Yeah. All right, so let's go back uh, to our documentation. Here. Sorry, let me just a little bit. Okay. Yeah, there should be a... Uh, CLW file and a project file is called like five load data and found in your uh, same folder as your dictionary. So it should just be a matter of loading up that. Uh, if you have to create a solution or not, but there should be at least a project in the CLW file. Okay. Let's see if we can find it. Okay. It says a lot about the conversion program. So you write this, this, and this. Oh, it's probably in your source folder. Things. It looks like it created maybe in your source folder. Oh, it probably redirection. Did. Redirection. Yeah. Oh, two, oh, two load data. Sorry, not five load data. Yeah. So this is it. This is it right here. Yep. But there's a project file too. I thought, isn't there? It's probably in the. Folder above. You probably have your redirection file to generate source into a folder called source. I'm going to move this out to the where it should go. Just put it here. And then, okay, there's the two load data project. Here, so you should be able to double click on that and then that'll look. Well, I'll just load it up over here. There you go. What should I do? What should I do? I'm going to close it off. I, yeah, close that and open a, open a project. I wish it, oh, here it is. I nope. almost did the right thing. I think I have enough uh, apps in this folder. Where is it? I, 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 I see apps. Right. There it is. There it is, right in the middle. Okay. And we want the um, this to load data project. Yep. All right, so this is what's generated. It's an, it's an application, and we need to compile it. Okay, and that's going to show up over here. Okay, and there's the CLW for it, and I put it up there so we can find it. Yeah, so it's okay. And then we're going to build it. So, And the build failed because it said it would, I think. In the docs. All right, we because there's put two in there. things you need to be aware of. Yeah, these things here. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, we put in a two include files because what we find is typically uh, in a lot of the, uh, the top speed files you're using some global variables for names and stuff like that. So we have one include file that has the definition for those global variables and another include files where you can set the values for those include files and. Uh, those those two include files could be blank if you wanted to, but uh, um, 
but we put them out there just so we don't have to. You can regenerate the the CLW file without screwing up your global assignments. That's basically why we broke out into include files. Okay. So I just commented these out when I was doing. Do I need to do anything here or just leave it? No, I, I think you can just comment out the, the errors and go on with life, you know. Okay. So we'll do that. Um, this, this one. All right. So you will get these two errors. If you don't need to do anything with them, I guess just go ahead and comment them. Okay. And then compile it again. All right. And that is done. So. See what we ended up with. This. To load data.exe. Now, do we need to put this in where the TPS files are? Uh, well, if, you're, uh, if your source had the right uh, data folder, then we should be good to go. Just run it. Just run it. It will complain if you can't find the files. All right. So you have choices here. If you're doing a test, you can hit one record and see, how it, see what it generates, I guess. You can do 10 records. You can do all of them. Right. And so right. This is a small data set, so unlimited is quick. But sometimes if you've got a big dictionary with 100 tables, maybe you just want to do run record just to make sure that all your uh, your definitions all match up correctly. All right. So we're saying it's not that these weren't found for some reason. All right. So in the source file, we've got to fix our source path. So go to okay. the, the two. Uh, let's see. Oh, there you go. See. Oh, okay. Now, if you go down to the top speed file definitions, probably a page or two down, uh, you'll see that the name is uh, like the. So we, we, yeah, we create a uh, a log file. We put it in a uh, little my log file. So that's like was in that uh, include file. But if you go down like one more page, you should see the top speed. Oh, here. So, mm -hmm. Right. So. Right now, that's expecting the customer file to be in the current folder. Right. So I would copy that over to where the TPS files are there, and then it should, it should run okay. That would be the easy solution, yes. Okay. Let's do that. I, I like to uh, have things go wrong because when people run into it, then they can see how to get out of it. <laughs> it's like, why didn't that work? Well, it didn't work because it's in the wrong folder. All right, so I'm going to copy that, and that goes to the example folder. All right, so that worked that time. In order to copy the CSV file into the SQL Server folder dot example, where it counts 250. All right, so the CSV folder should be here, right? And the example did it make it. I think in that example, double click on that, look in there. Yeah, there you go. There's all the files. Oh, there they are. There they are. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I need to put this. So copy that. Okay. I would copy the folder name and then change the script to match the folder name. Okay. So it should just be this. Yes. And go into the uh, load data script. Was it to load data script in SQL? Yeah, we already got that up here. And then uh, see where I do a search and replace, yeah, there, to put in the fully specified path. Okay. You've got it as a relative path. But, so right. change dots backslash examples to the actual fully specified path. It should be good to go. Like that. Perfect. Okay, it looks looks right. All right, good. So let's just run it. Run it. There we go. So now we've got data. So we brought our data uh, from those TPS files into SQL. And we know that because we can check it. So let's do um, this. Hey. All about <laughs> the world. 
No, it's not looking something. Uh, uh, what's going on exactly? Let's go here. It looked like. But however, did you log in with the same credentials? Did you log in with SA credentials? Yeah, I did. I mean, it's, it's working. I mean, if I just do a select, it's coming up okay. There's just something weird going on with, the, with this. So I don't know what's going on with this. I would not worry about this. Because we know that the, the data is there. I can do a select from and it's coming up. Okay. So here's all the customers that came in. Um, orders. There's all the orders that came in. Yeah, so there you go. So there's SQL scripts, so you can change them any way you need to and, and run them as, as often as you need to until you get it tuned the way you want as far as reading the data over. So this, I find this to be an incredible time saver. I mean, holy mackerel, it's just, we got our data over into SQL, and we, have, we haven't been doing this for like 45 minutes or so, and it just came over. There you go. I mean, that's, that's kind of the process right there. Now, you wanted to talk about, um, what do you want to talk about? Date times, right? Do we need to look at the dictionary now? Do we want to get it to it so that it runs? Yeah, well, yes. Yeah, so why don't we show what has to be done to make it uh, work in here, right? All right, so we can close this off. Go back. Let's get um, let's open our example program. Although I guess we need to change the dictionary first, right? Right. All right, mate. Close your solution before you open a new one. I should close it. Yeah, we're okay. Okay. These are just hanging around. There you go. All right, so let's look at the dictionary, huh? So we want to get this example out to run with using the SQL database now. Right. And everybody is top speed. So you would just go change the driver. Change, change the driver. driver first step. Yep. Yep. You know, Clarion has a nice thing where you can um, do search and replaces. And one of the things you can search and replace is the driver, but sadly it doesn't work. Because I had a really big dictionary where I had to change the driver over, and it kind of looks like it works, but it, it doesn't. Well, the other way you could do it, John, is you can export your dictionary to a TXT file, and if you're really ah. careful, edit your TXT file and re-import it back in. Yeah, this is such a small dictionary, we just just do it. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's going to do something strange with the um, dimension stuff. Right, because what you got to do, um, I mean, the one thing that we kind of, we don't give away for free because it changes with every version of Clarion is we've got templates that will actually take a, a dictionary. It looks like a TPS when you open it, but it will actually generate SQL code and do all these substitutions for it because in that sys file, if um, that was one with the dimension fields, so what you got to do right. is if it had uh, you know six times twelve or whatever in there, you have to now take that field and make seventy-two instances of that name, and then you know bump it up by uh, an instant count every time so that it works correctly in SQL. And uh, so the dimensions fields are probably the biggest pain in the butt when it comes to a uh, conversion. But luckily, a lot of people don't have a lot of dimension fields in their, their dictionaries to start with. 
They're kind of a holdover from old times. So uh, most a lot of people won't even have to worry about dealing with dimension fields. But uh, that's what you have to do to get that sys file thing to work correctly. Okay. I now, the other, we're just going to leave it now for now. Is that what we're going to do? Yeah. And the other thing that uh, it's typically bites you, or not bites you, but you have to be careful of is uh, reserved words. So in one of those templates, we've got a, uh, a template group that defines all the SQL reserved words. And those reserved words change a little bit from version to version. But, you know, there's probably maybe 100 or 200 reserved words in there. Where if we find that you uh, labeled a uh, one of your fields or, or tables with a reserved word, it'll tack on a prefix of RSVB underscore to that um, that name so it doesn't conflict with the reserved word. So like NO typically is, is a common one that's for number that uh, is SQL reserved word. So you'll see that uh, NO becomes RSVB underscore NO in the code. But the way we do that is we then will take, uh, it, it will change the external attribute so that your code does not have to change. And all, the only thing that changes is the uh, name in the dictionary or in the, in the database itself. So um, that way your existing code it goes unchanged and it makes the conversion go a lot quicker. So there may be a few of those that you, you reserve where it's like if you open up a company, maybe it has one. Take a look. I think state, well, state's a reserved word. So if you want, click on state, John. Uh, no, well, I meant, oh, here? The, 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 yeah, the state field in the company file. You want to look at the external name? Yeah, oh, wait. just to show people where it's at. So if you go into attributes, the uh, tab, and uh, so that right there is external name. So there you put in RSVD underscore state. Because if you look at the script, that's how it is. Or if you went to your SQL database, that's how it is in the table. So. Company. Yep, it's there. So that would fix that error right there and allow the, the two to talk together. Okay. So, so yeah, yeah, that's a good, uh, good point. You need to do a search for these RSVDs in the script, and then you know which ones to change in your dictionary. Right. And I guess the other thing, too, is that if you have any date time fields, um, then you may have to change the data type from, say, if they used to be a long, now they should be a date. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, check uh, order date and see what the data type is on that. It probably is a date field, I would guess, in your SQL. Yeah, I think so. That we're looking at orders? Orders, yeah. Open up. Uh, but you can expand on the left side, John. You can expand and see the data types. Oh, that's true. Um, okay, so, yeah, order date is a date field. And there, yep. So to make it correct, now we have to go back to the dictionary and change it from a long to a date. So does that, I mean, could you leave it as a long, or do you... Is this just a, a best practice thing, or is it? Uh, no, you, you really got to use as a date because then the syntax changes on the filters. I mean, it depends on some oh, okay. of how it's being used, but uh, it's definitely better to use the correct data type here. Okay. All right. I don't know if there's any others. If you um, open up that, uh, here, I believe there's it, a reserved one here. Yep, there's another one that needs to have a uh, external attribute set. Okay. I thought I would kind of look through. Now, if you if, well, if you want to look, go back to the original uh, program that generated uh, the conversion. I believe. All the changes like this are noted in comments on the top of that conversion program. So if you open up the two load data CLW file, 
Okay. Um, I just had it up here, I think. Go to your file recent list. It's probably in there. This one. Yeah. To the top. Um, there's your yeah. possible problem. It's right there. Oh, neat. Okay. So we got this one. We got this one, but we didn't get this one. Right. I, mean, I guess it doesn't delineate the dimension field error errors, but. Uh. Okay. Back to this file. This one. Let's take a look. That's going to be a. That's going to be a date field, yeah. I'll check over here. Actually, yeah, it's a date. Okay. Yeah, because well, yeah, the templates look. I mean, you try to guess based on the uh, if it's got the word date in there, but it also, but what it really drives it is that the uh, picture in the dictionary, the default picture, is an at D or something, mm -hmm. and we say, oh, it must be a date field that's got an at D picture. Right. Looking for this. Yeah. Okay. So do you think we're um, yeah, other than Hopefully that SysFile, okay this file with all those dimension fields uh, should be good to go. Yeah. Now, we need to put in an owner name for these things, right? Oh, yes. Sorry. And a path name. I, uh, yeah, because I, I, our templates automate some that. So the, what we typically do is the owner name is a connection string. So we use a, uh, typically use a global variable. I know we don't generally recommend global variables, but this is an exception to the rule, I believe. But uh, we call it a like glow owner string, yeah, with an exclamation point. And then we just you just kind build of it. Yeah. Then you put that on every table. And in the initialization of program, you put in the uh, server database name and possibly the user and password if you don't want to use a trusted connection. Then the other thing, well, of this. yes, the full path name needs to change too. And we usually, generally, you can use customers by itself, but we usually use dbo.customers or dbo.company. Put that in there. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to put the dbo, but I think it's a better practice. Okay, should I do it or not? <laughs> like that? Yeah. Do you like that? Okay. I don't think I put the – I can't remember where. I it's, it's not, it's not required, do. you know, depending on how you're doing your schemas, but dbo is kind of, you know, the default schema. And, you know, most people don't right. go crazy with schemas. It's the fun part where people get to watch me type things. Order is a reserved word. Order might be, I don't know about orders. Orders is okay. I got a new keyboard and I type faster on it. So we can all be grateful for that. All right, last one. And yeah. the other thing we generally do is that attribute, like um, create. Since we've got the, we're not going to create these files in the dictionary. And clearing creates some overhead, and, and some of the open logic gets confused if you turn the create attribute off. We generally turn that off so it doesn't try to try to create SQL tables for us because you. You get lazy or, or sloppy, you can sometimes it'll wipe out an entire table for you. And plus, there's overhead in there, so I just turn the create attribute off. Oh, these fans, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, we're having a buffering pro problem on YouTube. But I don't know that there's anything I can do about it. Uh, let me to take a look here. Uh, it looks like it should be okay. I can I can stop this. Hold on just one second, John. I'm going to stop the stream and then restart it. Yep. And it it doesn't. I don't know what it will do, but I'll try. Let's see what happens. Okay. I just hope it'll start the stream in the same place. Oh, one other data type we didn't discuss is if you use memo fields. 
Um, so memo fields in the uh, in the SQL become large uh, C strings or varchars. Typically, well, you can use a varchar max, or you can use a large field. You know, there's an 8,000 byte limit on a SQL row, so uh, if it goes over if your if your entire row goes over 8,000, you should do a varchar max. But um, you've got to look, look for those data types and change those over as well. And uh, if you got any blobs, too, blobs uh, can require some special handling. And uh, so our scripts don't really handle the automation of if you've got blobs in your TPS files and move those blobs into the SQL database. And that's not supported natively, but it it'll definitely get you a lot closer because you can manually address those. And tip users typically, or developers only have a couple blobs in their applications typically, so it shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, I'm, I'm just doing a little YouTube check here. Just hold on, just one second. It's looking okay on my preview here. I have a preview where it comes back and it's not buffering or anything. So I don't know. Uh, let me know if you guys still have problems. I suppose. All right, so we're here in the dictionary. We've done. What we're going to do. We still need to create this global variable. All right. You can put that right in the globals right there, John, in the dictionary. Do it. So our label is GLL. All right. Globals. It says globals. I mean, what description would I even put here? <laughs> so this would be the, uh, I don't know. It's fine. You don't need like. Globals, globals. Okay, so we want to put uh, without that. It's going to be a string. I usually use a, a street C string 100 or so, but whatever. The string will work. Oh, that's a big one. Okay, here we go. 100. Okay, there we go. So that's all set. Um, now we need to make a connection string. For it. Yeah, that would have to be done in the initialization of your XC before the first table. Is oh, this is the wrong file. What is this? This is not the example app, is it? The example, example app doesn't have anything in it, does it? I mean, it doesn't have procedures. Should we just generate a new app that's uh, in wizard it? So we can see the data. Sure. I think because I think I think the example app is blank, as I recall. All right, so let's do that. Uh, we don't need this. All right, here we go. So we're gonna make a new app here. Um, there we go. Following, I think. What is this? So why is it filling this in down here? That's interesting. Okay. So this is right. It's in the example folder. Let's put it yeah. in example two folder. I'll put it in a different folder just so it's in a different place. Okay. Let's get our dictionary. There we go. Don't wait. Well. You want to do all files, but that uh, control one, because that one's got the dimensions in there. Oh, it's, I don't want to I mean, do I, that one. I would do selected files and omit the, uh, the sys control. Okay. Sys file, I guess it is. No, and I don't know if you want, uh, I think there's a memory table in there, too. Is that mem detail? Mem detail, oh. right? Yeah. I'll do that one. Don't do that one. That's okay. okay, so these were converted, right? Yep. Next, next. 
Let's do it on now. Let's not do that. Um, done. Okay, so we got something. Now, at, at this point, what I would do is add Ultimate SQL in here because that's what I use and to handle all my connection strings and stuff. So, should I do that, or do you have a different way? Um, okay, you want the quick way? Okay, go into your main frame and go into the embedded editor. This is an ABC, so go to this window dot and knit. It's storing stuff. Okay. Okay. Okay, and then like the first line of code under somewhere up under code, put the glow uh, owner string equals uh, server name database name. You can put local if you don't. You can put local in parentheses if you don't want to specify it. Uh, I think it's the there's Eliza Dev nineteen slash Dev nineteen. Yeah. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, is that yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done. Okay. And then my DB one. name. I think it's my DB name, isn't it? I think you're right. Yep, my DB name. Okay. Close the quote. Compile and go. It should be. It should be. Maybe that'll do it. All right. Let's see that happen. Okay. So I just want to change this, right? This. Oh. I think so. Yes. A lot of choices. There we go. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, borders. So, the invalid record declaration. Okay. Well, this, is a, this, is, mm -hmm. this, is, this is good because we can show people how this, how this thing fix these problems. Okay. So, yeah, what we want to do is. Uh, Open up the uh, database definition on one side of your screen and open up the uh, dictionary on the other side. We can match them up and see what's different. Okay. So I usually do it from the source file. Oops. Okay. All right. Um, so say again, what do you want to look at on one side? Um, open your, uh, your main source module. Um, this one. Yep. And okay. which, that was the customer table that was given us there. Yeah, it was customers. Okay, right, let's find customers. Products, that's where the detail orders there. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so on the other half of your screen, put the uh, SQL definition. Okay, that's over here. I'll get to move this over. But then this. Yeah, that'll work. Right. Let me pull this down. Okay. Okay. So we look at customer numbers fine, first names fine. Oh. Well, okay. So we didn't, somehow the external attribute didn't get on your customers. See where it's used. See where it says reserve state on one side and it says state on the yeah, other? Yeah, yeah. I thought, right. I thought we, did that. we did that. We did Sometimes. We must have missed that one. I don't know that we missed it. I know sometimes clearing doesn't save. 
So I think uh, we'll just go back and redo that. So um, go into your dictionary and uh, see what that is. Okay. State. I know. What's this? Oh, what is this? <laughs> Why is there a different uh, value there? I don't know. I, that's the, uh, I believe that came from the Soft Velocities example app of um, something or other where they put in. But everybody, they, oh, it was mostly, mostly people who lived in the state of Florida, so they put the initial value. An initial value in there, okay. So, for me, I'd take it out, but uh, if you want to assume people live in Florida and nowhere else. <laughs> what is this? Let's check the other ones. I think. What else did we do? States. I just think we didn't go to that one table. I think it's just that one. Okay. Well, let's give it a go. Now, if you, know, if you want to uh, know how to get rid of that uh, dialogue error on opening, mm -hmm. you can do that because what happened was we tried to use a trusted connection, but we didn't tell the Clarion driver that you wanted to use a trusted connection. So we need to send to the SQL driver trusted equals true, and then when it opens up the first table, it will use that trusted connection. Okay. Or you continue to do that for the rest of your life. <laughs> there we go. Where did my data go? Yeah. Um, there you go. There's customers. Maybe there's no orders. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> so what else we got? Details. There's details. Yeah, okay. So it's bringing stuff over. Just like we wanted to. So now we're running on SQL. So we're from TPS to SQL uh, in an hour. With the data. That's pretty cool. All right, so the rest of it is just figuring out the connection string and how you want to have it there. Like I said, I would use OpenSQL, which takes care of all that kind of stuff for me. All right. But, you know, this is, this is fine. You do it this way, too. If you know your connection strings, which, oops, which I don't. I look out here. There. Yeah, I mean, easy. Easy well, you put trust. in a uh, username and a password there if you want to do a non-trusted connection. If you want to do a trusted connection, on the next line of code, you'd say something like send, uh, uh, say the, the customer table is send uh, uh, owner or equals true. Or I, I'd have to look to see the exact syntax. Is, but. Okay. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quickly show the ultimate SQL way just because okay. I'm here and I can do that. And then oh. we'll um, let's kind of get rid of this. I'm going to need this. And just to see if it works. Because it should. And then we can start, we can look at your large app. Okay, so that was equal. I think there's. Everything else, find connection and template. Okay, there's our connection string. The server is Liza, slash dev 19. I'll uh, leave this line for just put things in there. Database was, what is it, Jim? Uh, something MyDB, this is not hell. MyDB name. Is that what it was? MyDB name? My DB name. And you do have to put in some quotes. And true. There we go. Okay. That should do it. Let's see. Uh oh. What's this? Oh, I didn't put that I didn't put in single quotes. I forget to do this. 
every time. It's kind of a rule. If it's got these little dots, then you have to use single quotes around things, unless it's a variable, which that is. And uh, I forgot my rule. There you go. Ta da! Just like that. All right, so uh, there we are. Are there any questions before we go over to? Oh, there are actually two questions. Um, Carl's asking Are the RSVD words in a separate file or in templates? There are reserved words. Template file. If you want to open it up, you can show Carl the uh, reserved words. There, in, uh, I believe it's in the SQL TPW file, SQL reserved, or something like that. TPW file that you uh, want to be in the template in the template uh, folder. Accessories template win. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's the name? I'll just send it. Sure. Just start typing SQL. It'll come up. SQL. It was SQL something. Was SQL, yeah, that last one, SQL Reserve. There you go. Oh, there it is. Okay. Donate where? Go down. There we go. There they are. Okay, so this is a long, long list. Yeah, a couple hundred. Because, I mean, there's, like, certain levels of reserve words, like, well, these are reserved in ODBC, and these are reserved in SQL, and these are reserved in version, you know, 2018 of SQL, and these are reserved in 2008 of SQL, and, you know, so we try to, we, this is a, the most conservative view, so we try to include every possible reserve word, but you may not think some of these are really reserved words, so you could remove it from the list. Right. Uh, then Rich, Rich, you've got your mic open. Just talk to us. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll talk. <laughs> the uh, my questions are a um, couple of them on the memo fields that you talked about. Uh, what about uh, characters that are in the memo fields, like double quotes, tabs, carriage returns, line feeds? Do they kind of tend to mess things up when you? run those through the CSV, and what do you do with them? Uh, no, not really. Uh, John, if you open up the uh, the SQL conversion program, the two-load SQL.CLW file, should be in your recent file list. Yep. So you see there's a, a function called fix comma and fix DQ. Oh, so nice. if you look at, if you look down into the generated code and how it generates the CSV file, it basically runs every string through those functions to, to cleanse it. So if it's got any of those uh, special characters in there, it'll uh, remove them or, or handle them. Escape, escape them out or whatever you need to do. Yeah, escape them out. or It might convert single quotes to double quotes or, or vice versa. Uh, it might uh, convert it to a space or just remove them. I, I forget it, but... Yeah, if we go down just a little, little bit more, just a, no, like one page down. Okay, oh, one more page, I'm sorry. Okay, so there's where we're converting each field over. So it says, I'm going to append to the script line, to what's in the script line, plus whatever my delimiter is, which I believe it defaults to a comma. And then it says, well, if it's blank, then I'm just going to put in a comma. In there, if it's not blank, then I'm going to fix the commas. So if I find a comma in, say, the, the city field, it'll it'll strip it out or follow the rules, whatever is in fix comma, if it finds a comma in there. Does that make sense? Um, if on the SQL side you undo those changes and put it back to the way it was, otherwise I'm kind of lost. I, it seems that the data, you would be losing data as it comes across. Well, okay, I guess we can look at, uh, John, go toward the bottom and look for the fixed comma procedure or function, I guess function. Fixed comma, right there. Okay. 
So uh, scroll down a little bit. I'm just trying to see what it's doing with the. Yeah, if it's stripping it out, if it's you know, if it finds a comma, if it just deletes it. Because one of the issues, if you're using a, a bulk load, it's like um, say you want to preserve commas in your fields. Well, then what you have to do is you have to delineate every field with double quotes. And when you do that, all of a sudden your bulk load file, you know, like quadruples in size, what I've seen typically, because a lot of them are empty fields. But even empty fields, you have to put in two double quotes. So, so every field, instead of being, say, zero, it has to be a minimum size of two bytes. And I don't know, that's two bytes to every field in your uh Table, so it can dramatically increase the size of some of those files, which isn't a big deal if you just got a few hundred records. But if you're importing, say, a million rows or something like that, it'd be nicer if you didn't have to, you know, wrap every field with double quotes and you could just bring it in raw. But anyway, so this is a function in the code. If you don't like the way it's handling the commas, you can do it yourself. Or what we've done in some cases where we didn't want to use a, a true CSV file, we used, say, a, a, you know, a whacked out character, say, like uh, maybe two bars or something like that, because uh, when you do your bulk import into uh, SQL, you can use anything you want as far as your row delimiter and your field delimiter. So if you use some special characters that don't occur naturally in your data, say, like two vertical bars together or something like that, you can use that as your uh, delimiters, and then you can bring in commas, and it, it doesn't matter. Okay, yeah, that I follow. Um, the other question was, how about overlay fields? Um, we have a case where uh, in the original PPS definition, somebody put in arrays, and I didn't like arrays, so I created an overlay field. And so when I take the data to SQL, I envision just bringing, bringing it across as a string and not as the, uh, the array that was originally set up because it's just characters. And in SQL, if I just treat it as a string, it's better. So I was wondering, on the dictionary, can you tell it to omit the original field but include the overlay definition? I believe it works in the opposite way right now. If it finds an over attribute in the dictionary, it doesn't try to break it out into its details, and it just preserves the, like you're saying, the, the original string. It'll preserve that in your uh, SQL definition, not the breakout of that string in your SQL definition. So I, I believe it works in the primary field, not on the overlay field. Because, I mean, we did that all the time in the old days with uh, date timestamps. There's like a string eight with a, and then a group with a date timestamp over that that then had a date time field. And so um, really what SQL sees is the original, you know, eight byte string or really a date time field in SQL, but uh, in the clearing dictionary it looked like a string that was overed. So uh, we only look at the the primary field, not the overfields. Okay, good. Uh, one last question. The process that you're going through here, is it viable for commercial apps where you need to support both TPS and SQL because you have customers on one or the other? Well, we've done that for some clients. And I guess that's part of the magic that's not in the free templates, but in our proprietary templates that generate uh, TPS or SQL out of the TPS dictionary, because we just use a trigger file in the app folder, and I would call it for SQL.txt, and for SQL.txt basically has a kind of like an any file where you have a few variables in it. But if, if, there, if our templates see that the file exists in the app folder, it will generate SQL code. If we have a force tps.txt file and that app folder generates um, TPS code. So all we have to do is uh, we can just maintain one set of apps and we just copy the two folders and we just generate one as TPS and one as SQL. And uh, for that part, you know, if you do your coding right, 
99.9% of the time, you can use generic coding techniques on both uh, file driver systems, but we uh, create a global variable called flow, .c or flow colon SQL, that's a byte, that is true if it's a SQL uh, in the SQL runtime or it's false if it's in TPS. So if we have, say, uh, we want to optimize a filter in SQL to be uh, this way, and we want to do it a little bit differently in TPS because TPS doesn't filter quite the same way, then uh, we can say if flow SQL, you know, use uh, native SQL filtering, and then if it's if flow TPS, then it uses the, the top speed filtering. And uh, similarly, you can also use an equate if you don't want to use it, uh, have it on runtime, you can use an equate and use a compile mid structure to generate uh, code that's either SQL or uh, or TPS based on the, the folder that it's located in. And uh, then, like I said, all I have to do is copy the apps from one folder to the other, maintain it in one folder, and just copy the other. And you don't have to worry about dual maintenance. I mean, you still have to worry a little bit about dual testing because they don't always behave the same. But, you know, 99% of the time they behave the same. It's just some of the weird uh, things you might want to throw in a filter, like I say, a no case attribute or a substring or something like that might behave a little bit differently. And so that that works be with uh, templates and your templates instead of uh, yes. I mean, if you didn't, list. okay. If you yeah, if you didn't have our templates, what you could do is, I mean, if you're real careful in your dictionary, you could have two dictionaries that were had one was TPS and one was SQL. But you'd have to be real careful because uh, if you don't do your maintenance exactly correctly and you get your GUIs mixed up you can start creating weird results um, by maintaining two sets of dictionaries. Um, so you have to follow certain rules as far as how you do all that dual maintenance, but you can't have essentially the apps could be the same, um, but we like our, you know, customized template approach because um, it, it just makes life a lot easier. Okay, yeah. Thanks. What I say is that Life's too short, Rich. Just switch to SQL and be done with it. <laughs> what's, the matter, what's the matter with all these GPS people, anyway? Yeah, I mean, these days with, uh, you know, you got the express version of uh, SQL that's free. So, and that, we've used that in a number of client situations. And, you know, as long as there's a reasonable number of users and the database isn't huge, like under six users and maybe, say, under five gigs of data or something like that, the express version works just fine. You just have to know a few tricks to do your backups uh, correctly and, and things, and but they can deploy that and save the $1,000. But even, you know, these days for about a 1000 bucks, you get a, you know, work group license, a SQL that will accommodate up to 20 users, and you got more tools to have your, your uh, that are available to you. All right. Um, Jim, do you want to show your, your 80 table application? Do you want to? Well, I was over? going to, but I don't know if it's really that beneficial because I think we talked oh, about all okay. the concepts, so I don't know if it's okay. uh, well, fair enough. Then I, I think we're done, unless there's other any other questions about the conversions and such. I guess you can always reach out to Jim if you have any specifics as you're converting things over. Sure, yeah, I'm more than happy to, you know. Help. Okay, we did it. We got through, and it was so easy. That's I. I really appreciate you uh, letting these templates out for free because I think it'll get a lot of people going as you're switching over. At least, I mean, I had to write all my TPS conversions by hand, and this would made it a whole lot faster. And uh, but it wasn't. I think I did my conversion in early 2000s, so this wasn't out. It wasn't, I don't think it was available, or maybe it was. No, and we can, like you're saying, we can do things, like the ones, uh, the app you were referring to, John, we did the basic SQL conversion less than half a day. I mean, you still had some tweaking and testing to do and stuff like that, but the proof of concept and, and all the heavy lifting was done in less than half a day to go to yes. SQL. Also. Awesome. All right. Well, I think, I think that's, that. I think we're done then. Let me. Uh, so I want to show. What do we want to see? Let's see. Let's go back here. Here we go. Let's do this.
Back to the end. And look, I didn't even update the last slide because I never showed the last slide. And so I didn't even update it. So this part, we, we're not, we're here now. That's true. But coming soon is the holiday. So I guess that still works. So uh, again, big thanks to Jim for coming along and answering our questions. And um, yeah, let us know if anybody does a TPS to SQL conversion. Let us know how it goes. Be interested to, to know. And with that, uh, we're done. So next week, uh, it's just Niantis and Open Webinar. And then the rest of the week, it's Thanksgiving. So we don't do anything. We just rest and shop. So that's what we'll be doing. And uh, let's see. Yeah, that's good. That's good, 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 good. I know what I need to do. I need to stop sharing. I can do that. And look at look at Jim sitting next to the beach. <laughs> do you feel like you're at the beach? Uh, no. I no. look outside and see snow, so no. <laughs> uh, snow. We don't we don't have snow yet, but it is cold. So what can you do? All right, let me. Uh, we have a closing. We have a closing video. I didn't have time to find it and put it up. Let me do that. Here it is. All right. Once again, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jim. And we'll see you guys later. Have a great weekend. Right. Bye, everybody.